Hi. <laughs> I was having little problems. Hold on one second. Oh my goodness. That's not very, very professional, is it? Oops. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Hold on. I got it. I have this new, I'm really excited about it. It just came in the, it just literally five seconds ago, I tried this. So um, I was actually going to go back to the other mic too. Maybe tomorrow I'll do that. But uh, sometimes the internet is not as good in my art studio. So I have this modem ethernet that I run when I do Zoom classes. I just bought this little tiny adapter that goes from my phone to the ethernet through the lightning cord. Anyway, it should be all good. All right, so here we are, 4 p.m. I have my tea. Da -da -da. Isn't that so cute? This little tiny um, teacup with a little, well, the reason I like this one so much too is the tiny little forget-me-nots. Forget-me-nots are one of my favorite flowers right now. And they're in bloom all around like the shady areas of our walks that I do with my neighbor. Okay, so anyway, yesterday was so much fun. And if you hadn't seen, if you hadn't, if you haven't seen that video, um, Betty Franks was in my art studio and we, she came over and we spent the day together. We walked from my house, you walk down. So I live on top of a hill and you can see the beach on one side and you can see the um, Santa Cruz mountains on the other. So it's a really awesome location. And so you walk down to the beach, <laughs> but then you gotta walk back up. <laughs> So we walked back up, did a live in my Bloom membership, which is my membership for creative um, business owners who want to sell their art. And then we hopped over here. So it was a really fun conversation we had about some really good art tips. So if you want to watch the replay on that one, that was yesterday's. And I wanted to talk today really about like how I met Betty, a little bit about community and just a topic that I think is really important for any artist who is, did you see that bird? Any artist who is out there trying to find some support, um, some type of a community. So I have some tips on how to do that. But first I have to have my very first sip of tea. As my mom would say, the first sip is the best sip. Mm the first sip in the morning. <clears throat> this is my fourth cup of tea now. <laughs> so your very first sip. My husband says the same thing about coffee. Okay, so I met Betty uh, because I, this is what I was telling my other community. I met Betty because I saw her, I listened to her first. Before I even knew about Betty, I did a lot of podcast listening. I love podcasts and there's an amazing one for artists out there. She doesn't do podcasts anymore, but the great thing about podcasts is you can still go back and listen. It's called The Left Brain Artist. And um, I think her name is Suzanne. Yeah, Suzanne, because I'm, I'm on there. <laughs> she interviewed me too, <laughs> but before I would even think about being on anybody's podcast, years before then, I listened to one and they were, um, she was interviewing Betty. And Betty really got my attention because we have so much in common. We are the same age, we both left our corporate jobs, we both love color, we both love flowers, and she's really close to me. She's like 45 minutes away. But what I really loved about her was her Instagram channel was like crazy, it was so big. And I was just starting mine and I really didn't know what I was doing. So um, I reached out to her, I Googled her and I reached out to her. And one of the things that I would really encourage you to do as an artist who are listening is don't ever be afraid to reach out to an artist that you find online um, that maybe they're in your community, maybe they live nearby that you wanna go grab coffee or something like that to get to know them. I reached out to Betty, I did pay Betty, I reached out to her and I asked if she could spend an hour with me in a coffee shop and give me all of her tips. <laughs> which she did on Instagram because I was just at a point where I was like, my social media is not working. How do I do it? So I met with Betty and we just got along so well. We just hit it off. And then I ended up taking one of her classes that she was teaching in Los Gatos, which is about 40, where she lives and right over the, we call it over the hill, over this mountain. And um, then I, I think we just got along so well. We're like, let's get together for lunch. And then if she had an art gallery, I would go see her, I would go to her art gallery. And then we just, 
really connected and are now such good friends. So we are very supportive of each other. So when she said she would come on live with me, I was so happy and she was so excited. It totally made our day to just be together and talk about ideas and share them with you. So I really want to talk today about a lot of times artists can be creative in their own place, right? Whether it's your dining room table or it's your kitchen or it's your art studio, whatever. It's kind of a lonely place to be sometimes. And you know, you're, you're painting or you're making or you're crafting and you know, you might have some music on, but you know, you're in your own place and your own space in your head. Um, and it's really, really wonderful to find a handful of people out there who can totally get you, you know, can understand you, can sort of help relate to, I'm really stuck on my painting and I don't know what to do next. Or um, what do you think of this? Do you think it's like crazy or do you think it's a good idea? It's really fun to follow people and be in their world and bounce ideas off of each other because you may be in a family too, have a family around you who's like, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't know. A lot of people I felt like, a lot of my friends, I, I feel like I, I definitely needed the internet world and felt like that was a really good support group for me personally. I haven't connected with as many artists locally because I didn't put myself out there. I didn't join an art gallery. I didn't join an art league. I have now found more people by doing art markets and going to open studios and then I had an open studio. So it has developed. But when I was starting out or when I was just dabbling, I really didn't have much of a community to kind of bounce ideas around. So I would encourage you to reach out. So you can do that a few different ways. Like, if you are local and you meet up with somebody who happens to be like in a group or community or Facebook or anything like that, and you know that they're in your neck of the woods, then maybe just meet up for, you know, coffee or for a chat and then start a little art date club or start a thing where every certain time you're going to go sketch. It could be like once a month you find a, a common place and you start a little sketchbook, um, you know, community or you start a little art journaling thing. Uh, so there's a lot to do, not on the internet, but within your area. You might have to drive a little bit, but also in the internet world, in the digital space, there's so many things you can do. I remember during COVID, my mom is a painter and she joined a group and I love this name and I almost wish it was like my name I had, but it was called Paint and Connect. No, it was not that, hold on. Create and Connect was the name of their group. I think they were even on CNN or something. P paint, Create and Connect was their Zoom group. And every Wednesday they would meet and all turn, like all share the link, it was nothing you paid for, and they would all paint together. It was every single Wednesday they would paint together. And they did it for at least, I think they might still do it, but they did it for at least like a good year to two years. And really like that whole loneliness feeling, especially during COVID, but the loneliness of painting was so much more fun. And they would just turn on the camera and people would like come and go, you know, it was on for, I think, eight hours. <laughs> whoever had a big Zoom, <laughs> whoever had a big Zoom account would just turn it on and people would come in and out and paint, chit chat. Can you hear that? Good time for a tea break. As soon as I was done with yesterday's um, little chit chat, I went in and had my hot crust bun. I do not have a hot crust bun today, so I'm a little bummed about that. Um, but anyway, there are other things that you can do too as far as reaching out and finding people. There's forums, um, groups. There's so many Facebook groups. I have a Facebook group called Create Joy Facebook Community. Um, every artist I know and hang out with all have Facebook groups. Betty has one. I think she has one or she has, she, I think so. I'm saying that and I'm like, oh, does she or does she not? Renee Mueller, who is one of my dearest friends, has one. Jean Oliver has one. Dawn um, has one. Oh my gosh, so many people do. And they're usually free. I mean, I think they're all free. And yeah, because Facebook can't charge you for a Facebook group. And 
you can learn a lot and share your work and it's just wonderful. Um, but I loved just talking with Betty and just really, you know, connecting on so many levels. There's another couple artists that I do that with too. Renee Mueller is a really good friend of mine who's an artist who's incredible. Totally different style. Betty and I are like bright, oopsie, bright and beautiful. <laughs> Our color choices. Not that we're bright and beautiful, but our color palettes, bright and beautiful. We love our Nova. Okay, so that's what we love. Look at this color. Is that fantastic? This is the yellow green by Nova. Um, anyway, Renee, hers is a lot like um, earthy colors, browns and greens and siennas and um, or ochres and just like mustards and very, very earthy. So it's really funny when we get together. In fact, we are having a retreat. We're gonna announce it next week. So hop on my newsletter list. Um, we're having a retreat together in September, end of September in Santa Cruz. Um, and we're so excited because we have very different styles, but we're going to complement each other and bring them to the table. Renee and I met at Jean Oliver's workshop and and then I'm gonna tell you another artist, but Renee and I met at Jean Oliver's workshop and we became fast friends and that was five years ago. And Renee and I, Renee lives in Michigan, so she can't just like pop over to the art studio, but we became such good friends that we talk every Monday on Zoom. Every Monday at nine o'clock my time, 12 o'clock her time, we get on Zoom. We talk about usually our art business or art, like I'll have a painting hanging up and she'll give me some feedback and vice versa. So when you, and, and how I met her was, like I said, I met her at Jean Oliver's workshop. And then this other artist, I'm gonna tell you, Jen Botineau, I met her at Tracy Verdugo's workshop. And we happen to sit next to each other and then we became fast friends. In fact, Jen's coming to my, you know what? <laughs> you guys, you must follow Jen. She's fabulous. Okay. Jen is coming to my house. I'm looking at a calendar right below here. Jen is coming to my house on April, I think, 1st or 2nd. I'm going to make her come in, do a live with me on YouTube. She is so funny. Jen and I went to Tuscany together. Renee and I went to Lake Como together. And I know I'm telling you all these little tangent stories, but there's a reason. <laughs> so Jen and I sat next to each other at Tracy Verdugo's uh, very first, the very first personal, a uh, pers very first workshop I went to. That was like a big deal. It was five days. And Jen walked in. I sat at the end. I wanted to be in the back. I don't know why. I think I was nervous. I didn't feel imposter syndrome, I'm sure. It was my very first one that I had gone to. This was a long, this was like mm, 11 years ago. And um, there was this, like the class had started and in comes Jen like 25 minutes late. <laughs> and she just sits down next to me and we just hit it off. We spent like five days every time the class would end. So the so Tracy would be like, okay, everybody can go do their thing or whatever. <laughs> and so she, the woman who ran the studio, hi, Wendy, the woman who ran the studio, she was like, you guys can stay and paint if you want. So Jen and I would paint for hours every night after the workshop was over each day and then on the fifth day she left and I left and we stayed in contact and we are just like she is like Betty as far as her work Jen is super bright is super colorful it's it's like she walks into a room it's like sunshine um and so she, I met her that way too so I want you to think about when you are in a workshop whether it's a virtual one or whether it's a um, in person one, sometimes it takes a little effort to just, you know, introduce yourself or see if there's something to click with. But it's amazing the types of friendship, art friendships that you can have and then art dates that you can create. Okay, hold on. I need another sip. <laughs> I need another sip. I'm not a fan of cold tea. Some people like and buy cold tea. Never, I would never do that. And my nose is itchy. Sorry about that. Um, another artist friend that I met who is also local, 
and I met her through some crazy, crazy circumstances, but um, Sandy Shaw, she and I, she also went to Tuscany, and Sandy and I love to sketch. And we haven't been able to connect yet, but we have been trying to set up a sketching art date where, you know, we go, we maybe go to Gail's or we go to a local coffee shop and grab a little pastry, of course, and then we'll just go and sketch in town somewhere. Like we'll go plop, uh, you know, get a seat and just sit down and, and sketch. Um, so I want you to sort of think about that. Like if you're just feeling like there's nobody around and I, and I, you know, I don't really have a community, there's many, many places where you can find one and um, you can really start to have some wonderful friendships. And I really, I really truly, you know, lean on these friendships for when I'm feeling not, like when I ever get into that imposter syndrome mindset. Um, sometimes, sorry, my nose is really itchy, you guys. I think it's my allergy, <laughs> my allergies. It is windy around, see? Um, I know that's so rude that I'm doing that, but I'm sorry. Anyway, the, um, what I wanted to say, and I totally forgot my train of thought, but <laughs> it was obviously not that important. I just want you to feel, I just want you to know that you're not alone. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Whenever I'm starting to feel like I have a little imposter syndrome, we talked about this yesterday with Betty, is that I will call up one of my art friends. Um, you know, like my husband and my girlfriends, they don't really quite get it, I don't think, because they're not in that world. And I think they can't can't quite figure out, like, what are you talking about? You're fine, you're good, or whatever. You know, they're gonna give you, they're gonna compliment you and support you, but they may not understand what you're feeling. And so having these art friends, whether they're through a Zoom call or picking up the phone or being in a group or being in, in a community, can really help get you out of that mindset of feeling like you're not as worthy or you're not feeling up to the par or you're not feeling like you should be in that one place. It's so, so helpful. Anyway, so I hopefully that um, gives you a little, I don't know, I hope that makes you feel a little better. And if you need some more advice on that, you can always comment in the comments and I can see them and I can try and help you if I can. Um, and okay, wait, so I am gonna be here tomorrow. I've got something to talk to you guys about tomorrow. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry about my nose. Um, they, I do have a really fun, I'm so excited about it, live workshop on Saturday and I'm gonna drop the link in the notes. The class is about probably two to three hours. And Wendy, who's on here, she's, I think she's in. I think she's in, I'm not too sure. Um, and it's the early pricing is gonna end on Saturday. So you wanna jump on that, it's $27. It's gonna be probably three hours of just playing and painting and getting in the flow and just completely letting go of all of the craziness and the noise and the busyness. Um, and all of my replays, all of my classes, sorry, have replays. So you never have to worry about that. All right, so let me know in the comments too, if there's anything in particular you want me to talk about. I have a list a mile long <laughs> of chats. I will never run out of something to talk about. But you may be thinking, I really wonder what she thinks of this, or I'd really like to know about this. Tomorrow, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite, favorite things. And I call them magic mornings. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how I set up my day and my magic morning. And it involves creativity and it involves mindset. And it has changed my life completely. And so that is gonna be really fun. All right, so I am off to finish my tea. I hope you guys are gonna finish yours and um, get some work done and then go take a walk. So, all right, you guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for hopping on to my little tea time. Cheers, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay.